we go. We're started. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, today's e-pedagogy session is titled Wikis for Student Learning and Faculty Collaboration. Uh, this is a presentation about a curricular redesign grant uh, that was received by several faculty across the UW system to look at wikis for student learning and collaboration of faculty. Um, doing the presentation today are um, Dr. Nancy Chick. She's an associate professor of English at UW Barron County in Rice Lake. Uh, she teaches traditional face-to-face -face courses as well as hybrid and online courses. Also, we have Jakob Iverson from UW Oshkosh. He's an associate professor of information systems in the College of Business. And he's been interested in the promise of social technologies for a number of years and has incorporated wikis in his courses since 2006. And uh, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Professor Chick to uh, get us started. Welcome. Great. Thank you. Um, OK. So we're going to talk about wikis for student learning and faculty collaboration, because that was the focus of our grant. But we're going to emphasize using wikis for student learning. Um, here's just a, um, a preview of what we'll be talking about this hour. Um, we're going to start with just a quick intro to wikis. Uh, we're not going to assume that you all know what they are. We'll give you a brief overview of our LPDC grant that Pat was just mentioning. Um, we're going to focus on the examples that we've gathered of um, wiki uses. Uh, and then we're going to end with a discussion of different wiki platforms or brands. Uh, you might think of it that way. And we'll pause at uh, different times for questions. So uh, first, what is a wiki? Jakob. Thank you. Oh. I will just bring up my slides here for a second. Go back. Sorry about that. Here we are. So uh, what's a wiki? Um, wiki is uh, uh, the origin of the word wiki is it's a Hawaiian word that means quick. And uh, the original creator of the very first wiki called WikiWeb, WikiWikiWeb, uh, was a, uh, he was a web developer who took a shuttle or a flight into Honolulu Airport and saw that they had the WikiWiki Wiki shuttle bus, which was a quick shuttle bus. And so he came up with this notion of um, a website that was very quick and easy to edit, meaning that you could edit the, the page right in your browser. And that has really led directly to the wiki that we all know very well, uh, Wikipedia which is yeah, probably the most well-known wiki and probably the, the biggest wiki in terms of the number of pages on there. Um, and so I wanted to, I just grabbed a couple screenshots from that to illustrate what you can do on a wiki. Here's a, a, a snippet of a wiki page at the bottom there. This is the Wikipedia page describing, describing Twitter. And uh, some of the things you can do uh, on this page, obviously, you can look at the information about Twitter. But if you look, the third uh, tab from the right is called Edit This Page. And that's really the key um, thing that you can do on this page is that you can edit the Wikipedia articles. And that, if you click on that, that would bring up the top right screenshot where you can see the code for the wiki uh, text. So you could write in this sort of uh, HTML-like code. It's a little simpler than HTML on Wikipedia. But you can write anything you want about Twitter on that page. The other thing that um, Wikipedia allows for is a discussion. So for every page, there's a sort of behind-the-page discussion that goes on where those who are writing about Twitter are discussing what should be on the main page. What, how can we improve that main page? So that's what's in the top left corner, where there's a couple of entries into the discussion. Uh, not all wikis have this discussion uh, feature built in. The final aspect of Wikipedia is, uh, or, or of any wiki really, is the history function. And I've shown that uh, just a brief portion of uh, a couple of edits made to the Twitter article there. So one on 
2329 on 7 April 2009, uh, actually two right at that same time, and then one at 2328. So uh, three edits have been made, and you can see how you can compare different versions on there. Um, and before continuing to demonstrate, uh, we have a live demo of a uh, wiki lined up for you. But uh, before that, I wanted to show you a little video of what a uh, what a wiki can do. So we'll see if we can bring that up here. This is a video called Wikis in Plain English by a group called Common Craft. <laughs> <laughs> These four friends are going on a camping trip. They need to bring the right supplies because they're backpacking. The group needs to plan and plan well, so coordination is key. They're all computer users, so they start planning with an email. It starts with one, but then becomes a barrage. Email is not good at coordinating and organizing a group's input. This is the old way. Boo! The important information is scattered across everyone's inbox. This isn't coordination. Let's start over. There is a better way. It requires you using a website called a wiki. Using a wiki, the group can coordinate their trip better. This is the new way. Yay! Most wikis work the same. They make it easy for everyone to change what appears on a web page with the click of a button. It's as easy as erasing a word and rewriting it. The buttons are really important. There are two that are essential. They are edit and save, and they are always used together. Let's see them in action. Here are our camping friends, and this is a wiki website. Like all wikis, it has an edit button. Clicking this button transforms the web page into a document. All you have to do is click it, and the web page becomes a document ready for editing. Editing the page means you can add or remove words or change how they look, just like writing a letter. Once you're finished editing, you click Save, and the document becomes a web page once again and is ready for the next person to edit it. Easy. Edit, write, and save. Using this process, a group can coordinate more easily. Let's apply this to our camping friends who need to bring the right supplies. Mary signs up for a wiki site and then sees the new site for the first time. She clicks the Edit button to get started. She creates two lists for camping, what we have and what we need. Under We Have, she lists the things she will bring, a cooler, stove, and flashlight. Under We Need, she lists items that others need to bring, compass, lighter, water, and food. She finishes the process by clicking Save, and the website now has lists for the camping trip. Now it's John's turn. John vi visits the wiki website, clicks Edit, and the page becomes a document ready for him to make changes. John volunteers to bring food and water, so he moves those to the Have column. He also realizes the group will need a knife and rope. Once he's finished, he clicks save and the wiki is ready for the next person. Henry visits the wiki, clicks edit and he can edit the page. He remembers they need a tent. Henry saves the page and the wiki is ready for Frank. Frank edits the page and agrees to bring the remaining items, completing the process. Frank saves the page and realizes something awesome. The group has created the perfect camping list without email. Yay! But wait, one thing is missing. They need a location for the campsite. The wiki can help with this too, but another page is needed. John visits the wiki and clicks edit to edit the page. Okay. He types in the word locations and highlights it. He then clicks the link button. This changes the word locations into a link to a new page. John clicks save and next, Frank visits the wiki and sees the list and the link to the new page. He clicks on the locations link and arrives at the new page. This new page enables gr the group to use the same edit, write, save process to coordinate locations. This process can be repeated over and over. These three buttons, edit, save, and link, make it possible to organize a great camping trip or create the world's biggest encyclopedia. You can sign up for your own wiki at these websites, PBWiki, Wet Paint, or Wikispaces. I'm Lee Fever, and this has been Wikis in Plain English on The Common Craft Show. All right, I hope that was helpful. So I think the next thing we'll do, uh, and this is a video I should say that we've used several times to introduce people to wikis. So it seems to be helpful uh, in terms of, uh, of showing people what a wiki is. So I hope that was helpful for you as well. And now we'll try and 
demonstrate a real live video. I can share out my desktop here. Grab part of my screen here and share that. So here's just a section of a, um, a wiki. This is uh, on the PB Wiki um, website. And right now, uh, I'm viewing the page here, uh, the front page of this wiki, which we've set up just for this purpose. So there's not, not much content on here. Uh, you can see uh, at the top there are two tabs for view and edit. And you can see the, the content on here. And if I scroll down, you can see the content that's been typed into the page. Here's this wiki demo and so on. And then a couple of comments. So this has a discussion feature that's at the bottom of the page. And you can see how both uh, I have added the comment in, and Nancy has also added the comment on this page. Now, uh, to demonstrate this, the power of this wiki thing, let's click on Edit. And now we can quickly edit. Um, Did that line show up for you over there? Yes. All right. So I've added that in, and now I can hit save, and that then becomes live on the page. You can see up here at the top is the page history. So we can go back and look at all the edits made. And we can compare between two different uh, versions, so I can compare what I just wrote to what Nancy had written previously, or the previous version of this. And you can see there in green I, is what I have added. Uh, if anything had been deleted in this new version, that would have shown up in red and striped through. And this, and this ability to have the history uh, available like that is, is really powerful when you're working with student assignments, as we'll see later on. It becomes a great tool for figuring out who's been working on the page, what they've done, and, uh, and what's going on on the page. Um, another feature of wikis is that it's, it's always very easy to create new pages. Uh, and one of the ways you can create a new page is actually simply by creating a link to a page that doesn't exist. So we can add in here, here's a new page. Will work. Click the insert edit link, and you can see in this uh, box here that it says the link type is to a PB Wiki page. I could have put in links to a folder or a URL out on the internet, or to an email address. And then the page I can choose between existing pages or a new page, and the text that shows up is page, and that's the name of the page as well. So now if I click save again. Now we're back to looking at the big page itself. We can click on page, the link there, and I can now create my page. And now we have a new page. Here's our new page. Save that. And if we now over, uh, we now go back. Let's see if I can go back here. Here we are. The front page is listed over here on the right. So there's a, a link to the front page. So here, we're, here we are back at the front page. And if I click my link to the new page here, we'll see that I go back to the page that we just created. Nancy, is there anything else I should talk about here? I don't think so. Uh, I think PB Wiki is pretty simple, and that was a good demonstration. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, this is Pat Fellows, UW College's LTDC rep. And um, my question is, can multiple users be editing at the same time? Good question. Yeah, that is a good question. I don't know for PB Wiki how that works. 
Do you know, Nancy? I don't. I suspect it's the same as the others, but only one person can be editing it at the same time. Is that your understanding? I, there are different models. Some some wikis will uh, only allow one person in at a time, and if, if a second person tries to edit, they will be locked out. Uh, there are other uh, platforms where if multiple people try to edit, the second person will get a warning and but still be allowed to edit, and then the, the system will try to merge those changes. Uh, usually that works well. If you're working in two different paragraphs, not a problem. But if two people are trying to write in the same paragraph at the same time, obviously the results can be um, surprising when they both save it. But for PBWiki, I don't know what the what the model is. Well, that's okay. I think that's a that's a helpful answer because um, my experience is that it varies from platform to platform too. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think we're back to you, Nancy. Okay. I'll pull up my. Do I need to turn off sharing here for Nancy to take over? Do you see my PowerPoint? It's not. No, we're good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, just briefly to um, uh, describe the grant that led to all the examples that you're going to see in a few minutes. Um, again, as Pat mentioned, we, uh, we got an LTDC curriculum redesign grant, I believe in 2007, for the 2007-2008 academic year. Um, that grant was called Wikis in the UW System. It was interinstitutional within the UW System. Um, there were 13 of us faculty members from six different campuses working on this project. Uh, I should note that um, Jakob from Oshkosh, Wendy Leeds Hurwitz from Parkside, and I were the, um, the co-principal investigators. Wendy is in France this semester, so she can't join us in this presentation today. Um, but she uh, was a leader on this project as well. Each of us led a team of colleagues from different campuses um, uh, in exploring wiki usage. Um, uh, and you'll see some of the results from uh, my team and Jakob's team shortly. Um, what we did is we investigated wikis as sites for two kinds of meaningful interactions within the university system. Uh, perhaps the most important is the student learning project, where students um, participate in and then demonstrate their learning, uh, collaborative learning, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. And then uh, for faculty work, for faculty collaboration, uh, we wanted to see how wikis could be used for the work that we do um, in our professional activities, everything from brainstorming and organizing projects to collaborative writing of formal materials like um, grant applications, which you'll see at the end today, or articles for publications which I'll mention, mention as well. Um, and then finally, to public sharing of product, projects. Um, uh, so that's what our rather large uh, grant project was. And we want to, again, thank LTDC for supporting us in that, in that work. Um, OK, we're going to provide some examples of wiki uses in the classroom. I'm going to provide uh, five different examples and then turn it over to Jakob for his examples. Um, I want to emphasize that uh, we don't believe in using technology just for technology's sake. We really want to start with the teaching and learning or the goals and then try to find the technologies that best suit those goals. And those of us on this project really value uh, collaborative learning or collaborative work. And that led us to the wikis because wikis, as you saw from Jakob's discussion, really are the ideal technology for collaboration. Um, in terms of learning, uh, we really value collaborative learning in the classroom. Um, here are just a couple of quotes uh, that help define collaborative learning and the goals of collaborative learning. Um, we recognize that knowledge is socially produced by consensus among knowledgeable peers. In collaborative learning, we want to avoid having students become dependent on the teacher. And the goal is to develop autonomous or thinking people. And those are all from a book that I would recommend, uh, Collaborative Learning Techniques, which you see right there. It's a really practical uh, book with lots of different examples of uh, collaborative learning activities. 
um, and uh, both for just regular face-to-face -face classes and for using technology. Uh, it also has a good introduction to this idea of collaborative learning and a solid list of other resources and research um, that you can look at for more of the, um, the history of collaborative learning and, and the theoretical foundation. Um, so I'll just throw that out there. Again, to show that uh, the pedagogical and the teaching and learning goals come first, the technology comes second. Okay, so one kind of learning activity, collaborative learning activity, that wikis uh, facilitate well is the common activity of jigsaws or jigsaw group work. Um, this is when uh, you may have used these many times in your classes. You have a, a large unit of meaning that can be divided into sections, and then you assign those sections to different small groups. And those small groups really work within those sections to try to understand or to try to create meaning. And then they share their work back with the class, so each is contributing a piece to the whole or working on a different piece of the puzzle, hence the metaphor of the jigsaw. Um, I know people use these for addressing different sections of a chapter or different but related readings or key concepts. The example that I'm going to give is from my Introduction to Literature course. Um, and the skill here is interpreting figur figurative language or what we call unpacking figurative language. And in this case, using a really small unit of meaning, um, just a, a single line or in the example that I'll show you, three small lines of poetry. Um, I want to show you the assignment template. So this is an example of what the wiki looks like when the students first look at it. This is the, um, the actual assignment for each group. Uh, you see that I indicate their line or lines, and let's see if I can use this red dot. So here are the lines of the poem for this particular group. Um, I add the group members' names here, but I block them out for FERPA purposes. So um, you don't see the names, but the students would come here and say, aha, I'm in group four. Um, they'll eventually, as they select their roles, someone will volunteer to be the group facilitator, and then someone will volunteer to be the polisher. The facilitator helps make sure that everyone in the group contributes. The polisher, at the very end, um, obviously polishes the document to make it publicly presentable. Um, and then here I just outlined the different parts of the assignment or the different moves um, or thinking processes that make up this specific skill. Um, this next page is uh, the history page or part of the history page um, showing uh, how these three students in this one small group work together to interpret fully um, uh, three lines of poetry. Uh, you'll see that I've tried to obscure the names here, again, for FERPA purposes, but I wanted you to see at least, you know, there are three different students here, so you can see the first names. Um, uh, this, on just a tangent, this is one of the challenges that Web 2.0 uh, presents to some of our academic traditions and guidelines. Um, I would recommend Michael Wesch's article from the January 7th uh, version of Academic Commons. He addresses some of these um, clashes of how Web 2.0, like wikis, where all the work is tied to specific students or specific contributors and to their names. It just makes it difficult to um, achieve anonymity, which I think pedagogically is a good thing, but in terms of public presentations, it makes it a little challenging. So I'll just throw that out there. Uh, the next page, just uh, here's um, an initial history page or an initial uh, moment where you can see that a student has now added initial interpretations to these two parts of it. This is just an excerpt of the page. Uh, the other four aren't on the screenshot, but um, the student added more. Um, so the green here, as you see from the instructions up here, are additions. Here's a later shot of the history. Um, again, here, this is just an excerpt, but you see students are starting to respond to each other, um, uh, ask for clarification. It's also interesting, you notice this group, this doesn't always happen, but in this group, students are, are identifying their particular contributions. So they're still thinking of their work here individually. Um, you'll see that that changes, but 
a couple of my groups have started this way, where they really want to identify whose work is whose, um, which is interesting considering the goal. Um, here's a later screenshot. Again, this is a smaller one, but you see here another student is adding her thoughts. They're starting to edit or proofread their work. Here's a later screenshot. Again, students have added more interpretations. Um, they've deleted the instructions now, so it's just the students' work. Here they've removed, they're removing their individual markers. Oh, this student kept hers. Um, but they're starting to remove individual markers here as it becomes a collective response. And then here's the finished product just from this one group. Again, just dealing with three lines of poetry. Um, I couldn't fit it all on one screenshot, so this is just the first part. And there's the rest of it. Um, and again, this is uh, exactly what we want to see in an introduction to literature class. These students have worked together um, to pay careful and thorough attention to not only the denotative and literal meaning, meanings within these three lines of poetry, but the connotative and figurative language, multiple meanings. And they've really, I guess you could say, dwelled on these lines. Whereas outside of an activity like this, they would read it probably very quickly. They may come up with a layer or two of meaning. But together, they've really explored the implications of these three lines just beautifully. Um, and uh, we see it in writing here. Another kind of class activity that's collaborative that I think is fairly often is a group research project. Um, and let me try, I'm going to show you an example. Let me try to show you my desktop. And then, do you see my desktop? Yes. OK. So here's an example of a group research project. This is from Rebecca Meacham's English 355, a postmodernism class. Rebecca's in the English department at UW Green Bay. She was one of my team members. And she used um, a wiki. Uh, one of the ways she used it was for this group research project. Students were in groups and they chose one of the course authors. They did research and they uh, wrote biographies or um, uh, yeah biographies of some course authors. And so I'll just show you um, Kurt Vonnegut. Some information there uh, with some links to some interesting sites. Notice each one has a link to a work cited page, so it shows their research. Here's Art Spiegelman, the author of Mouse. Uh, again, you just see a nicely developed biography here, Sarah Vowell. And it goes on for more authors. They're all on a single page, but here groups have worked together to do some research and explore, here's Tim O'Brien, some relevant authors. Uh, let's see, just so you know, between October 8th and December 6th in her course, there were 206 edits to this page. So that's the level of collaboration you see, again, for multiple authors. But that's a, that's a pretty solid um, uh, group contribution. So that's one way of doing uh, group research. OK, now let me see if I can go back to mine. Okay. You see my slide? Yes. Another kind of collaborative activity that I think many of us use in classes is um, uh, kind of whole class collaborations. Um, here, uh, I think a common activity is to develop a, a glossary of course concepts. Um, Let's see, and I'm actually going to show you uh, oh, another one. So let me go back to sharing my desktop. OK, again, here's from uh, Rebecca's English 355. This is a fairly familiar one. This is a course glossary on a single page. And the definitions, uh, notice they're fairly short. They're concise. So this is like a, a, a typical glossary. Uh, students picked, find, I'm not sure, um, individual terms, and students worked out very brief, concise definitions. A few of them gave links to other sites. 
So this is one kind of, uh, I think this was a fairly small assignment. Um, now let me show you kind of a more simplified one. Going back to my slides. And uh, while the other's coming up, on Rebecca's class's glossary, there were 136 edits from September 30th to November 27th. Um, just so you get a sense of the collaboration there. Here's another kind of course glossary that's a little more expanded. This is from Chuck Ryback's course. Um, Chuck is at UW Washington County. And he also used a course glossary. You can see the terms here. So this is kind of like an index. Each one links to a wiki page where a group of students developed a more extensive um, definition. Uh, just to show one example, let's look at the group that worked on the term symbol. And here he started the page with just the definition from the book. So the very basic definition of symbol. Um, here's a later history page to show here's what was first there, that definition from the book. Here you can see uh, how students have started expanding it, adding materials and information. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole page, but you can see the scroll bar here on the right. It goes much further down, so there's much more uh, that students have added. Just so you can get a sense of the history. Oh, wait, let's go back. Um, let's actually look at the final product very briefly. Oh, let's see. There. Just. Maybe we're just going to look briefly. Okay, here is, again, one definition of the term symbol. A small group worked on this. Um, it started with just the textbook definition. Look at how developed this has become because of the students' collaboration. And I'll try to go slow but to show you everything. Um, let's see. Between September 11th and November 18th, there were 107 edits to this page. Notice how expansive this definition is. Students have really used this term and expanded it to religion, um, and images. So they're really delving into what symbolism means. Um, and it's Shirley, she has a, not a scarlet letter, but a black letter for her name. Oh, there's the scarlet letter. So a nice, well-developed, collaborative uh, definition of a key course concept. That's a little more, I think, than we often do for this fairly common assignment of um, course glossaries or key course terms. OK, I'm going to take you back to my PowerPoint to show just a couple more examples. Uh, another kind of assignment that I think a lot of us uh, use is an end of semester group project. Um, when students work on some project for maybe the last half of the semester, um, oftentimes they propose, they plan, they write it, they report out, uh, and then maybe they present it to class. Um, the example I'm going to use is from my colleague Holly Hassel at UW Marathon County. This is her Women's Studies 101 course. Um, I actually can't show you the final product because the names of the students are just all over it. and, and um, uh, so I'm going to show you some other parts of the assignment, just so you can get the idea for the end of the semester activity. Um, so students write a proposal for the activity. So this is, um, right here you see the five components of a group proposal. And here students have started to work on it. They started uh, drafting. Here's a later one, uh, or a later history page, where you can see they started editing, adding uh, different ideas, different um, proposal ideas. And then here's the final version of this group's proposal. Again, here's the assignment. They've started to um, uh, develop their clear and I think well thought out plan um, for their project. Um, here you see the actual assignment for the uh, project report. So groups here developed a report. Here are the components. They'll have a work cited. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, and to go back really quickly, you see the five groups and their topics. 
So these are the topics that students came up with for their final project. Um, but again, their names are all over those pages, so I can't show you those pages. I can show you a little bit of um, one group's uh, history page, just so you can see um, that these five students work together uh, to develop their report. Um, and the final project is really interesting, uh, um, but you'll just have to imagine that and think of the process that they used to develop the project there. And then the last example I'll give is from my um, uh, Women's Studies 101 course. Um, the example here is uh, from something that I think is really significant, especially to introductory courses. It's an introductory uh, introduction to Women's Studies course. And I think in a course like that, it's really important Students are getting the introduction to a discipline. So one part of the final exam that I always give is having the students define the discipline. And in this case, I did it collaboratively on a wiki. I had the entire class work together to develop an interpretation of, uh, sorry, uh, an understanding or a definition of women's studies. On the wiki page for the whole class, I have the assignment here um, with deadlines. One thing I'd point out. Each of you may post only 60 new words to the wiki each week. We all know how in groups, and especially in a large, a large group like this, it would be very easy for one or two students to do most of the work, other students to sit out. Um, so I, I gave this requirement so that um, no one could um, uh, do most of the work for everyone else. Um, so I think that's an important piece. So here's the assignment. Students would just start editing on this page and eventually delete um, that assignment. Uh, I'll show you part of the completed history just so you can see the extensiveness of the work. Um, uh, if you start at the bottom, you see the very beginning. And then if you go up, that's the progression of the dates. Uh, notice also uh, it's helpful. I know Wikispaces allows this, and I think most of the others. Students can add a comment or annotate what they did. That's really helpful. Looking back, I wish that I required that because I think it's nice for them to think about what they did. And it's also easier to track. I'll just show you more of the history so you can see how they contributed again when you start at the bottom. Start at the bottom and move up. And I think those are um, all of the edits. And I, again, I'll try to obscure their names. All of the edits for this page. And then I'll just show you what they came up with. Um, they've deleted the assignment, and here's what they came up with. They came up with these categories of what are the questions asked by women's studies, what are the principles or key values. Started uh, breaking those down. Uh, what's feminism? And then the best online resources. Uh, and that's it. Um, so here I'll pause for questions. Or, uh, yeah. Nancy, I have a question. This is Pat. Um, I'm wondering how quickly students um, can ramp up to being uh, skilled at using the wikis. You know, that's a great question, and I think it I, I think it has a surprising answer. Uh, very quickly, um, the the wikis that I've used are very simple. The hardest part for them, uh, and I, I I'm putting air quotes around hardest is actually setting up their account. A few students have had trouble. Um, I've used Wikispaces exclusively in my classes. Um, and, and a few of them have just had trouble getting, you know, signing in for the first time and setting up their account. I don't know if that's because they're not following instructions. It's just been a few students. But that's the only trouble that my students have had. Uh, it is so simple. The interface is so familiar um, that there really has been no trouble other than the few students that have had to work a little harder to get an account set up. Um, I've heard absolutely no student saying that it was difficult for them to learn how to use the wiki. Um, Jakob, was your experience any different? Uh, perhaps a little. I think it depends on, like you said, that when the interface is easy, there's no problems. And a lot of the interfaces are easy, but they haven't always been easy, and some platforms are still not that easy. Good point. Good point. Um, the other thing that I've seen is I, I see some students having some angst about this. It's a new system, and they feel that they don't know it, and they feel that they are the only ones who don't know it, that all the other people in the class have always been doing this wiki thing, whereas no one has been 
doing this wiki thing before. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, yeah, yeah <laughs> but they I do get up to speed quickly. Yeah, I think that's a good point, the anxiety. But once they get in there, if the interface is simple, right. it seems to become a non-issue. Right. Any other questions before we move on to Jakob's examples? All right. Okay. I'll take over here. And it's actually, a, I think, a good um, overlap with that question because what I will demonstrate is actually a progression of assignments. Um, this is from the uh, an, an introductory information systems course. So uh, it, this is a course that every business major takes, but it's about uh, what every business major needs to know about information systems. And the the culmination of, of the sequence of events is a, uh, a research project, much like one of the ones, one of those end of semester projects that Nancy was talking about. But I had them go through a progression of um, of projects uh, for a couple of reasons. The, the groups uh, were assigned randomly, and in many cases when I taught more than one section, they were assigned across sections, making it deliberately difficult for students to get together outside of class to look at each other face to face and work on the project. Uh, so they were, they were working always um, individually uh, away from the other students. And uh, that presented, again, some unique challenges. And so I wanted the groups to come together and, and give them a better, better sense of those groups. Uh, the reason we did that was because it's fairly common in business to have projects where you don't know the other people that are on that project. They may be working overseas or just in another building or, or something. But that's the, the conditions we were trying to emulate. So I started off with an assignment where they were to build their own individual home page, so just a page about themselves. And I put on a couple examples here of a couple of those pages. So one guy had his uh, snowmobile there and talked about his major. I had some requirements. They needed to put their major in. They needed uh, they needed their email address in and um, and some interests. Uh, they also needed to put a picture on, but it didn't have to be of themselves in case they didn't want them. Uh, anybody to know what they look like or have some concerns about that. So somebody put in, you can see uh, their cat on the other side there. So, uh, But that gave them a sense of the interface, and it was something that was obviously very easy for them to do uh, and, and, and simple. Then uh, they moved on to work in, uh, in small groups, and I set up uh, just links so that every group would have their own home page and they were required to come up with a name for their group. And you can see uh, on the right there, you have the Niners. Uh, and they started using uh, the, their home page sort of as a Facebook wall. Uh, you can see how they have introduced themselves and talked about what class they're in and when they can meet and, and how to approach the project. Uh, so that home page became their, their, their home for all of the assignments they would do as a group. And you can see three of them listed there. These were, again, fairly simple exercises that I used to reinforce uh, the course content as we went. So they, for every chapter or so, they would come up. Uh, there, there was an exercise that they would have to uh, do some sort of reflective activity uh, that related to the readings out of that chapter. And yeah, so here are some of the revisions made to one of these uh, these pages. Uh, Nancy did such a great job on showing revisions and, and development in, in some of these projects that uh, I don't want to go into that much detail, but uh, showing here some of those revisions. Yeah, and just another way of showing the, the revisions here is a side-by-side view in this particular platform that, that we can show. Uh, and then the final of these, um, well, one of the exercises I did was that was a little similar to what um, Nancy was describing with working in larger groups. So I had uh, a section of 25 to 30 students working on a page together. And, and obviously, when you have that many students working together, uh, especially if it needs to be a, um, a very coherent document, uh, then it takes a lot more coordination. And it also takes more calendar time. You can't just expect 25 students to to take two days to write a paper because, uh, yeah, it, it just 
uh, everybody will be conflicting and, and they won't have enough time. Uh, but the results are typically pretty good. Uh, like, like Nancy was showing, you get a lot of uh, thoughtful content uh, created um, by all these students and, and without any one of them um, doing a whole lot. This time around, I'm teaching this course right now, and this time around, I've decided to divide this assignment into phases uh, to try and break it up a little. So in the first phase, which runs a couple weeks, they are to do the primary research. So this is where they will uh, just be putting in the content, so coming up with examples, finding statistics that should go on the page, putting in the basic content, sort of a, a collective uh, brainstorm, if you will. And then the second phase will be fine-tuning and, and creating coherence uh, on the page and developing a conclusion. And that will, again, run a couple of weeks. So um, I'm not sure what the results will be of that, if it makes a difference uh, to, to divide it up like that. But we have seen uh, in our overall project that uh, some instructors have found it helpful to break projects up like that because it, it makes it easier for the students to manage and it also ensures that uh, there is progress in uh, in these projects. It's it's somewhat easy to uh, to procrastinate in these projects and not do what you're supposed to do uh, until the very end. I've seen several times when students have had these uh, small exercises to do uh, where it, it's not it really isn't that much work, but then everybody goes in the last day, the night before it's due, and that sort of um, defeats the purpose of these collaborative efforts that are supposed to develop over time, where when everybody goes in at the last minute, uh, there's not much collaboration going on. So that was my example. Uh, any questions on that? Jacob, which platform was that? It's called Twiki. And this is one that uh, is not a, one where you can just sign up for an account. This is one that needs to be downloaded and installed locally. Other than that, it works very well. Other questions? For me. I guess we're back to Nancy. Okay. Um, briefly here. Uh, now we'll briefly talk about examples of wiki uses for faculty collaborations. Um, and I'm just going to start us off by showing uh, that appropriately, Jakob, Wendy, and I wrote our uh, grant application for this LTDC curricular redesign grant. We actually wrote it on a wiki. Um, so right now you see the page that came just before uh, we deleted it and I started putting together uh, the proposal offline in a Word document for the budget questions. We didn't want to put that on the wiki. Um, but here you can see um, what we had written in the weeks following, or in the weeks prior to uh, this version. And you see we had it very well planned out. Again, the three of us working together, um, it was great. Uh, putting together what we were going to do on this wiki, the specific, I mean on this grant project, the specific assignments, our roles, um, uh, different members we would invite onto the project uh, is great. So that's my example of, uh, for here, uh, faculty use. As I mentioned, uh, Jakob, I'll turn it over to you, but while you're pulling it up, I'll just mention I've written um, several collaborative book chapters, uh, several uh, collaborative articles for publication, uh, as you see here, grant proposals. Um, committee work, I've done quite a bit of committee work on um, wikis, so I use wikis a lot for my uh, professional work. Uh, Jakob, you were going to show some other examples. Yes, just briefly, this was uh, after we developed the, uh, the proposal, this was the, the collaborative hub, we called it, for the entire uh, grant project. So this is where all faculty that participated in the, in the project could go and uh, provide content and, and add their their uh, their input to this. Um, and actually, it just occurred to me this is not the best way of showing this. So I'm going to switch and share my desktop. Sharing. 
So this is the uh, the grant hub, and we had uh, news that we would share with faculty. They could go and read that. Um, and we also used this for um, for coordinating. We had our calendar of events, so we would. We put calendar of events, meetings we needed, and information about, we had a couple face-to-face -face meetings, so we had information about those. Those were planned on the site, sort of uh, similar to what they were doing in that Common Craft video. We also developed, this was, uh, I think, one of the good resources, and, and I don't know if we can provide the, a link to this page for other people to see, but this was our best and worst practices. <laughs> for um, wiki projects in, in the classroom. And uh, there's a lot of good <clears throat> good advice in here uh, on what to do, what not to do, ways to get started, uh, ways to grade uh, ex uh, assignments, ways to structure assignments as well. So there's just a... They're all tried and tested from our, uh, our successes and failures. So, yes. Yeah, I think this is really helpful. So, um, I think that was it for this page. Um, let's briefly go to another resource that we probably should share a link to is the WISC Wikis site, which is actually where our grant originated. Um, I forget who put this together originally, but uh, do you remember, Nancy? Right. Okay. But uh, this was a project um, that was funded to, to get people in the UW system to think about wikis. And um, this is a set of, of resources that was developed for that purpose. And our grant is a direct descendant of this project. So there's a lot of examples in here of specific projects that people have done. I can find examples of that. But, but in here, you can find, if you poke around, Examples of projects, uh, tips and tricks again, um, things that were going on, ways of choosing a wiki platform and so on. So again, a good resource that was developed collaboratively among faculty of the UW system. Yeah, the folks that developed it, uh, Doug Warsham and Wendy Leeds Hurwitz are the folks that I've had. Oh, okay. Right. They've had with them. Doug, I've worked a bit with Doug on it. But yep. Yeah. So I and, think and they were folks to contact. Right. And they were funded by an LTDC grant as well. Mm -hmm. yes. right. So I think the next portion is talking a little bit about um, wiki platforms. Yes. How do I go back to sharing? Content. All right. You see my slides now? Mm -hmm. All right, good. I'll try to make this brief. So um, we tried, a part of this project was also figuring out what, what platforms are out there and which ones should you choose uh, when you are uh, trying considering uh, using a wiki. And so I did a brief, very informal survey of various faculty. Seven faculty provided input to this, so this is not very scientific at all. Um, then, but then we also installed some of the platforms that could be uh, downloaded and installed. We ran them locally to see what they, how they worked and so on. Um, we found here some of the very important um, items uh, that, that faculty found were, were important to have. Um, a, a, a user-friendly editor, uh, user-friendliness was really key. Uh, uploading external files, embedding images, and so on. Um, it's not changing pages for me now. OK, well, I'll just talk my way through the next. Maybe it will flip in a minute here. Uh, there we go. So there's uh, other items that we found as medium importance. Um, this is some more advanced features uh, that uh, didn't seem quite as important to people. Things like um, 
adding streaming video onto the page and so on. Have groups of students. Less important streaming audio, uh, sandboxes for the system. So, um, and then here are here's a list of some promising candidates we looked at. So this was sort of our short list for uh, local install of of, uh, of web of, of wikis. Uh, Media Wiki is the same one that Wikipedia runs on, and that's so that's a very robust system. But it's also not very user friendly. You have to write in that uh, the wiki code, so the learning curve there is quite a bit higher. And there's no button for creating a new page, for instance. So there's a different way of doing that. Tricky is the one I've been using, and then there are some others on there. On the right side are some commercial ones that you have to pay, and some of them it's a significant amount of money uh, for for those solutions. Uh, but they are also uh, very well done. Um, and if you are considering adopting a wiki for an entire campus, uh, those should be considered. Uh, you should definitely consider looking at the commercial uh, options because they they do offer features for managing many wikis and managing many users and groups of users and different levels of permissions and so on uh, that uh, generally the free and open source ones do not. Hosted wikis is the other one. These are wikis where uh, you just go onto a website, you sign up for an account, and you're good to go. Uh, some of these have ads. Uh, Wiki Spaces is supported by ads. Some of them have a free um, beginner version, and then you have to pay for more advanced features. Um, TV Wiki is one of those where you can uh, have a one or two wikis, and, uh, and after that, you have to pay. That's my current favorite, by the way. Right. Soho Wiki is another one uh, that I've been using a bit. Uh, it's okay, but uh, it has a few issues. And I think PB Wiki seems to hold more promise than Soho Wiki. Again, there are some commercial ones that you can sign up for where they don't have a free or, or ad subscribed version. And we should add that many of the UW campuses already have um, identified a Wiki platform that they're using. So check with your local campus. Right. to see if one's already in place. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's, it's a, a, there's a lot of platforms out there, lots of stuff to choose from. And they're getting a lot more user friendly. So if you've heard from people in the past that wikis are difficult to use, uh, that is changing. Uh, the editors are becoming much more powerful. And there are many more features added in. PB Wiki, for instance, has the notion of adding plugins. So you can have uh, I think you can put in a, a Google Calendar that becomes live as a page in there that you could collaborate on right within the wiki. Uh, it does seem that the hosted options are developing, de developing a bit faster than those that you install locally. And certainly they're able to bring on new features uh, more easily. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just so if your campus support a wiki platform, if they do, you probably have to go with that. Uh, otherwise, go online and uh, and sign up for, for an account. And you can do that anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's all I have to say here. I think, Nancy, you had a couple of uh, things on, on things you had done. Yeah, I, I was just going to give a couple of examples of the free the free ones, um, but I think we've already shown plenty of examples. This PB Wiki is my current favorite. Uh, I also like Wet Paint. I've used Wiki Spaces um, uh, in my classes just because I paid the five dollars a month to get the ads removed, um, and they're what I've been using, so it's just easy to use them again. But I think in the future I'm going to move to PB Wiki. That's where I've been doing a lot of my committee work and such, and I really like that site. So. That's all I have. I could add that PB Wiki. I've, I've looked at that as well. And apart from having a free online starter thing, there is also um, a, a paid version that would be uh, the appropriate for campus adoption. So that allows for many users and many wikis and, and um, a much better security model built in. So that it seems like a promising one and one that we are exploring here at UW Oshkosh. Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, jump in here because we are out of time. 
Um, on behalf of the Learning Technology Development Council, I would like to thank both Nancy and Jakob for uh, sharing their experiences with their um, curricular redesign grant on wikis. Uh, super presentation, folks. And uh, I think what we'll want to do is to get some of those uh, best practices and worst practices from you so that we can get them online and share them with uh, the wider audience in the UW system. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I think they'll stop the recording or they'll cut it off after that. Okay. Uh, we, we'll probably end up having folks at Whitewater edit it, edit out the pre and post. But nice job, you guys. Thank you so much. That was fun. I learned a lot. I, I'm taking notes here on different things. And, <laughs> um, so, uh, and colleges is, is really, we, look, we tested MediaWiki, and you're right, it's a pain. <laughs> So we're we're looking at some other options. And we we had started using that for the grant, and a few of us were just like, oh, I can't stand this. So we yeah. migrated to uh, uh, Wiki Spaces with links from Media Wiki. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all right. Well, thanks so much, yeah. and um, I will be sure to um, let you know when it's posted. Okay. And uh, I will also write um, a note to each of you so you can put it in your portfolio for merit. Thank you. Because I know that's important. But, uh, yeah, this was great. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks for asking us. You bet. Yeah, and thanks, Jakob, for being available. And, and, and yeah. Sure. You too. I'm just impressed that we hit the one hour mark. We did. Exact. <laughs> you did. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yay. Good job. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I'm going to hang up and, Okay. Um, right. and move on to another meeting and then go to Eau Claire. So. Oh, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all have a good day. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yep. Bye.